Networking and Marketing Made Simple is for you, the business owner who has a product, a service, or a message that you believe in. My name is Scott Aaron, and each week we'll take a behind the scenes look into the real world marketing and networking tactics and strategies for getting what you have in front of you to a lot more people. Thanks for spending time with me. And now let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Networking and Marketing Made Simple. Super excited about today's episode, obviously, for a number of reasons. I know how much all of you enjoy the interview episodes, hearing other people's journeys and and stories of of what they started with and, and pivoting to what they're doing now. And, you know, again, the guest I have for you guys today, uh, I guess, speaks to me in a, in a, in a couple of different ways. One, uh, marketing and branding, uh, as you guys all know, uh, Nancy and I are just in love with marketing and branding. It's part of what we teach, uh, but also podcasting and podcast production, which obviously for those that are in our uh, high level mastermind, this is also something that we teach you. And there's really just such an important aspect of not only leveraging a podcast from uh, a content creation standpoint, but also a, a networking and opportunity standpoint. And we're going to dive into all that and more. So Ben Albert, welcome to today's episode. Scott, dude, I'm humbled to be here. I hope I can bring value um, and I appreciate the opportunity. This is going to be fun. Absolutely. So I usually have two standing questions, one at the beginning, one at the end. And the stuff in between is basically just us kind of riffing on specific things. So the first question I always like leading off with, if if you can rewind the tape back to a, a specific moment in time, um, you know, people call it the light bulb moment, the aha moment, the pivotal moment, the catalytic moment. You know, what was that moment for you in your journey that allowed you to step into, you know, obviously this new road and path to go down that has led you to where you are today? Yeah. So COVID hit. We all know what happened there. I was furloughed from my job. I was a sales executive. We were doing video production all across the United States. No travel, no sales, no video, no fulfillment. Um, and I found myself in a really dark place. So a big moment I talk about, and it wasn't even just one moment. This happened 20 times. I'm laying in my bed, staring at an empty bottle of Jim Beam whiskey. Um, I'm down and out. I don't have a job. I've been trying to get jobs. Nothing's landing. And I remember feel, not only have just having a headache, but looking at that bottle and thinking to myself, why am I trying so freaking hard to find a job to go work for someone else when all my skill sets are in online marketing and anybody can do it literally on the exact same laptop that I'm applying for jobs on? That laptop that's right in front of me has made me more money than I was making as a sales executive. I work way more hours, but building something on my own. So it's not like I just put the bottle down and was perfect, but having that realization that I was going in the wrong direction for so long and then making that decision to put the chips on myself rather than another person's company was the biggest decision I could have ever made. Yeah. Right. So COVID, you know, affected people in in many different ways. You know, um, Nancy and I, I, I would say we're more primed and ready for it just because uh, I had been in the online world since 2013. Nancy kind of followed suit in 2017 with me. So it, it definitely pushed people in, in different ways. And, you know, Nancy and I work with so many people that were in a similar situation you know, they were furloughed, they had to pivot, they had to change. And, you know, obviously things not only worked out, but people ended up, you know, really leaning into their their zone of genius and and experiencing a lot of growth and a lot of change. Now, on the flip side of that, there were a lot of people that didn't have that kind of experience. COVID still to this day, you know, three years later is still affected them in uh, a negative capacity from a business perspective, you know, obviously when things first um, hit and you're furloughed, 
you know, the initial thought is, you know, panic, you know, where's my next check going to come from? You know, what was going through all of that to where you are now in these past three years? What would you say is the biggest lesson that you learned, not only from a, a business perspective, but from a, a personal sp- perspective about yourself that you didn't realize that was there? And obviously COVID brought it out. Sure. I'd say that there's seasons in our life and similar to the weather, we can predict it, but we can't control it. If I was furloughed, if COVID had happened five years ago, this whole entrepreneur thing, I would have failed. I was way too focused on the wrong things. If it had happened 10 years ago, um, I don't even know. That was my party phase. It's like, there's seasons in our lives and this just happened to be the right time, right place for me to step into my truth, start building something and be successful. But if you've tried building something, which I've done in the past and failed, it's just a season. If COVID happened and you're still in a rut and you're in a depressed place, it's just a season and you'll be called the moment that you don't get to choose when you're called. You don't get to move the hand of God. You don't get to control everything. I was lucky enough that I had spent the past 10 years reading, writing, self-development, meditation, working on myself, that when the opportunity arised, the, the opportunity arised, I was ready for that opportunity this was my season and that's why people say all the time ben you're so humble i genuinely think i was freaking lucky in COVID. i would never ask for that to happen again but at this place in time in my life it just landed on my lap and worked out for me now in in the stuff that you were focusing on obviously doing um marketing the production side uh in the corporate world How did that that prime you, obviously, for doing what you're doing now, obviously, you doing marketing and branding, but also, you know, podcast production? How important was it for you to have that? I don't want to say real world experience, but but corporate Mm -hmm. world experience that obviously got you ready for the entrepreneurial side of things and the business ownership side of things, which you're obviously doing right now. Yeah, the biggest thing is sales sales and talking to people Um, because the biggest struggle i see with any startup entrepreneur small business great tech companies they have a fantastic solution but often they don't know how to market and even more often they don't know how to sell they don't know how to persuade they don't know they don't have a sales cycle they don't have a crm they're unorganized And they feel, and I'm sorry if I'm calling anybody out, but they feel just because they have a good solution that they deserve success and people deserve to have it. What I learned in the corporate world, dialing one of my roles, I was dialing the phone one to 200 times a day. Another role, I was on five to 10 presentations a day. I learned to go out and search, to go out and hunt, to go out and bring people in. But beyond that, farm those relationships and turn them into a book of business that at the end of the day, every business owner needs to build those relationships, build a book of business. Um, And I learned that in a high octane sales role, that's very different than what I do as an entrepreneur, because there's only so much you can do, but having that skill set to be efficient is huge. Now, when it comes to podcasting, obviously, uh, I had the honor and privilege of of being on your podcast, and it's you know it's one of those things now. Um, I'm, I'm four and a half years in, uh, you know, well over three hundred and fifty thousand listens since the, its inception. It's been such a needle mover for me in in our business and what we do. And obviously, I know you're experiencing the same things, and. <sighs> Not everyone should have a podcast, but I do believe that everyone has the possibility of leveraging a podcast to really showcase their skill set, their zone of genius, but also use it as an incredible networking tool the way that you and I do. What were the biggest misconceptions or the biggest misconception that you personally felt about podcasts that was completely wrong 
once you kind of fully uh, enveloped yourself in that whole community and obviously having your own podcast today? Yeah, so I, I was lucky enough to start with a music podcast in 2016. So I've been dabbling with podcasts for by now a very long time. Um, really, the biggest misconception is that audience growth is easy and or necessary. Like at the end of the day, if the only people listening, and it often is the case when you start, the only people listening is you, them, their grandma and maybe a colleague that saw the social media post it's our necessity to bring as much value to the conversation every single time because we can change that grandma's life we can change that colleague's life but beyond that we're building a relationship the guest and the host are creating value together and building a relationship that can lead to referrals partnerships community so many things serve as peers um, but so many people are so focused on audience growth right from the start that there's a term they call it pod fade. You get faded, you get tired, you only make it through seven, eight, nine episodes. You wonder why you're not making money. And it's because possibly you were going into it for ego, clout, or trying to build a massive audience quick. It's hard. if Unless people already freaking know you and you have a huge email list, it will work quicker. For most people, it's hard to build audience quick, and you shouldn't try to build audience quick. That's the wrong reason to get into podcasting. The right reasons, what I already said, build a relationship, add value, get better, network, market yourself, enhanced influence through the people you surround yourself with, et cetera, et cetera. Audience growth, huge misconception, not even required for the first year. Yeah, it's one of those things where when I when I first start, I remember when I first started my podcast, and I had a few people actually listen to it. I like was ecstatic, and I'm like, I said to my wife, I'm like, oh my god, people are actually listening to this thing. And you know, four and a half years later, you know, I have anywhere between fifteen to eighteen thousand listens per month now, which just blows my mind. To and that wasn't overnight. That's only been in the last, I would say year or so but it's been ramping up steadily year after year and pod fade is something that i talk about all the time there's so, it's so easy to start a podcast yeah but it's just as easy to give up on a podcast because it, it takes uh consistency and effort to keep it going and what has helped me and this is just advice to to all those out there um, what allowed me to succeed is I'm always eight to 12 weeks ahead or in the can as they call it. And that means I have banked episodes. So I know that there's content that's going to be going out for the next eight to 12 weeks. What's the, the biggest thing that you learned in having your own podcast to not only be consistent, but has made it successful, not only from a networking and business building standpoint, but I would say from that personal branding standpoint to really position yourself as the expert. Yeah, well, I do the same thing. I'm always at least eight weeks ahead. I love that strategy. Um, I So when I got started, so there's kind of two pieces of advice here. When I got started, I put out an episode a day. Um, so November 2020 started a local business podcast, wanted to network locally, establish myself as a thought leader in my community before I rebranded. So I did 22 episodes in all of November, Monday through Friday, 22 episodes in a month. When I started machine gun approach, let's meet as many people as possible. Let's have as many conversations as possible. Let's move fast. A second approach and what I do now is I reduce the frequency of the episodes, but I try to squeeze out as much juice as possible. So I use um, the podcast as really just one sector of something that I can take, repurpose into quotes, repurpose into short videos, create SEO optimized show notes to beef up my website, get them to post on their website, to backlink to mine, beef up the SEO that way. Um, and really deliver an incredible experience. So from the guests coming on to recording, to the content we create, to the way we promote, a side note, Scott, like after we're done with this conversation, 
I'll leave you a testimonial on the spot when we're done with this conversation so you can reuse that video. So it's, I've already done an hour conversation, a 30 minute conversation with a guest. Let's make as much use of that time by repurposing it as many ways as possible. And a lot of these guests, some become clients, but a lot of them see the amount of time and effort and care we put into everything we do. And then they become a referral partner because they didn't spend money with me, but they got to see what it would feel like if they did. And again, it's getting as much juice out of one item as you can. Um, or you can go machine gun approach because at the end of the day, the more hands you shake, the more money you make. But now that I have a little bit of an audience, I'm more about value than quantity. You know, value and what you bring, not only to the, the marketplace itself, but what you bring to someone else and their network. And that's why I love podcasting so much, because it allows you to a get to know someone in their business because you can become referral partners, much like what you were you and I were talking about in the pre-show. People don't. There has been a lost art, in my opinion, in networking. I think people are trying to automate and remove too much of themselves from the process of building relationships where if people actually leveraged the online space the right way and how easy it is to connect with people online, you could have power partners all over the world. You could have referral and affiliate partners all over the world where you have business coming to and from you left, right, up and down. How important has it been, not only for you know the marketing and branding stuff you do in your agency, but from uh, the podcast production standpoint and the, the business assets that you have outside of your podcast, how influential has your podcast been for you uh, in enabling the relationships and connections that you've been building over the last few months and everything that you've been doing? How pivotal has this podcast really been for you and your business? It's so darn nuanced, and I wish I could put a number to it, um, but I feel like I'm getting a master's level doctorate education completely for free on my time. It's like It's like having the most brilliant thought leaders in the world and going and showing up to their office hours and just asking them any question you could ever imagine. That's so just powerfully valuable in itself and that's beyond the more nuanced point that when you make friends with you know behavior scientists with 200,000 youtube subscribers to four-time emmy award-winning talk show hosts to award-winning authors you know new york Times bestsellers like what's even more nuanced is you become cooler just by association so you're learning from the best you're raising your reputation and your branding and it's costing neither of you hardly any money at all other than labor but you're creating something so these people that maybe even like five years ago when zoom wasn't big they would have never spent their time with me and i don't blame them and they can get paid $50,000 for a keynote. But I say, hey, all you have to do is show up, no prep, answer questions. And I get time with people that just charge $50,000 for a keynote. Like, I wish there was a way to quantify this. But when it comes from your personal and your business development, your personal brand, your personal growth, I can't think of a better way to get in the right room and learn from the right people while elevating yourself. I literally can't think of a better way. I I could not agree more. And it's one of those things where you and I see it because we're on, I, I would say we're on the other side of things, right? And if people just understood that um, business, no matter what capacity and what form it's taking, it's the marathon, not the sprint, right? Mm -hmm. the, the analogy I use is that you can take Usain Bolt, who is arguably the greatest short track sprinter um, in, in sprinting history. You can put him in any marathon anywhere in the world, and he will lose every single time because he's built for speed, not for distance. 
And when you take that marathon approach to growing your business, growing your network, growing your connections, growing your relationships, your business and yourself will withstand the test of time, whether it's a pandemic or not a pandemic, you know, a down economy or an up economy. It just really uh, allows you to put on that business armor that we all require to take on those arrows that will be fired at us so we can continue to progress forward. So before I get to my last question, Ben, uh, if someone listening to this has been intrigued and interested in everything that you're doing, um, how can people find out more about how they can work with you, connect with you, podcast with you, and uh, what's the best way for them to find out about all that and more? 100% appreciated, Scott. I want to bring up a random quote, Taj Mahal, I'm built for comfort, not for speed. And it's, it's, it's like the opposite. I like to do things I love. I like to have conversations with brilliant people. I'm not clocking in and out. Oh, I spend... 62 minutes with Scott, not 60. I wasted two. No, I, I want to live a life that's in alignment with just enjoying myself and hanging out with people that value my time and, and same goes. Um, so I'm open to connect with anybody who gained value from this conversation and that Scott or I could possibly help. I'd love to have the conversation. Um, I'm sure you'll put the LinkedIn in the show notes. The easiest way to find me is just to type in Real Business Connections. It's the name of the podcast. Type that in whatever browser you're currently using. So you can find the podcast in your podcast app. You can find it on YouTube. You can find it on Google. Just type in Real Business Connections. Find me there. And I'm built for comfort. I want to hang out, have a conversation, and we'll have fun together. Love that. So as Ben alluded to, all that information will be in the show notes and the description of this podcast. So Ben, final question before we sign off, what does success truly mean to you? Ooh, it's, it's, it's a great question. I never have a perfect answer. I'll give you a kind of two. The one that I just said, um, I'm built for comfort, not for speed. Can I move fast, but keep be comfortable? Can I do things I'm passionate about at a high level, but not feel stressed? That to me success. So it's not how quickly I move or how much I accomplish. It's how comfortable and enjoyable the process of accomplishing it is. And in addition to that, um, when I look in the mirror, am I bloodshot with that empty bottle of whiskey next to me? Or can I look in the mirror and be confident and convicted in who I am and who I am becoming? That mirror test will let you know if you're successful or not. Love that. Well, Ben, just want to thank you again. Uh, not only for having me on your podcast, but for you uh, accepting the return to favor to be on here today. I know my audience took away so much from this and, you know, just grateful for you, our connection and uh, looking to continue to support one another, uh, refer business to one another and collaborate together. So thank you again for being here. Thanks for having me, Scott. Absolutely. So as I forementioned, All the information of how to connect with Ben, find out more about his podcast and all his services will be in the description of this podcast. Also, uh, as I've mentioned in previous episodes, uh, outside of the Monday and Thursday free episodes that are always dropped for networking and marketing made simple, you can unlock a bonus Friday episode with our new subscription. It's the Networking and Marketing Made Simple podcast subscription. It's $2.99 a month. You can cancel at any time and it does unlock a private and special bonus Friday episode every single week for you and you only. If you're interested in doing that, you can also go to the show notes in the description to start your subscription today. So everyone, please enjoy the rest of your days and I'll talk to you next time. Bye everyone. Thank you so much again for checking out today's episode. And if you are listening through iTunes, Spotify, wherever you are, please leave me a rating and review. Let me know what you loved, what you would like to see improved or ideas you have for future episodes. And if you are interested in taking your business to the next level, don't hesitate to go to my website, www.scotterron.net where you can schedule a free discovery call with me where I can learn more about you, your business, what you're struggling with, and how we can work together. And don't forget to check out my wife, Nancy, and mine, our free community on Facebook called LinkedIn Leads for Life. We would love to see you in there. Have a great rest of your day. 
and thank you everyone for your support. Grateful for each and every one of you.